Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to Kickboxing with Tim and the Mechanic. I'm Tim, joined as always by the Mechanic, Brenda Catino. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. Ready to talk some kickboxing with you. Absolutely. Been a busy few weeks here, and we've got some huge news coming out. Um, the two biggest stars in kickboxing fought last year in one of the biggest fights in kickboxing history, and now they've gone different ways. Tension, of course, is going the boxing route. He vacated all of his title. Takuru tried the uh the, the the free agent route he left his titles behind and began touring the globe and now he has a fight schedule he'll be fighting at mtgp in paris france in japanese prime time against bailey sugden for an isca title it sounds like he's gonna be paid by abima uh and he's gonna be making f- at least seven hundred fifty thousand dollars up front plus some pay-per-view money so we're talking about almost a million dollars being a free agent in kickboxing this is some pretty big news brandon what are your thoughts on this one yeah, man, hey, like I said, man, it's all about it's all about getting that bag, and that and that's definitely what uh, uh, Takora did. Like, like I always say, man, you know, we're prize fighters, and he went out there, bet it on himself, and and he's getting paid for it now. You know, like I said, you know, to 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 definitely get to definitely get seven hundred and fifty thousand, um, you know, already already up front, and then and then and then whatever else you're gonna get for either like ticket sales or 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 or, or a pay per view, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, that's just extra for you. Oh, it's yeah, it's extremely impressive to make that much money as a free agent in any combat sport uh, and to do it in kickboxing is is unheard of. Like this is this is the kind of money that we're talking about with maybe Badr Hari and maybe Rico Verhoeven. We've got Takuru making that kind of money. This is great news for him. But he's booked against the ISCA champion, Bailey Sugden. A lot of people don't know Bailey Sugden. Um, uh, but you, you had mentioned him on the podcast before as one of these guys like we need to get him into a major organization. He got his fight now, right? Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, I know Bailey Sugden from from his time in Glory. And then I know, like I said, you know, everything happened where you know a couple people left off and stuff like that. And I know, yeah. I think Bailey Sugden was supposed to be in a K one tournament, but he yes. hey, but, but 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 he got hurt. So, but hey, but now he is, you know, again uh, again w- w- against a big name, tough kid. You know, uh, it, it, sh- it should be a good one. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, he was booked into a K1 tournament. Arguably, this worked out better for him a few years down the line. I mean, you got the biggest fight you can ask for. So Bailey Sugden, uh, we should uh, hear from him in the next few weeks here. Uh, this fight is going to be coming up on June 24th, live from Paris, France. Uh, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's just huge news. It's great news. It does sound like this is more of a boxing model. So he didn't sign with MTGP. It's like Takuru Productions and he did um, like found his own corporation so it sounds like it's going to be mtgp in association with the takuru uh productions paid for by abima tv just in the same way that when floyd mayweather shows up it's always like floyd mayweather productions in association with showtime with blah 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 productions and so on so takuru i think this is just the proof of concept he's gonna do this fight show other organizations like this is how it works this is how i'm getting paid this is how it works for you guys um and then he's just gonna tour around the world beating up at champions in every organization i imagine you know you know what i mean yeah, no, yeah, I'm sorry. I I was trying to I was trying to find it because I know we were just talking about the mm-hmm. money, and yeah. I can't remember what exactly is he getting paid because I forgot a, the the exact it's like ten million Japanese yen plus pay per view from a Bima TV. So MTGP actually still has to pay him on top of that, which isn't going to be a huge amount of money. Yeah. Um, and then potentially sponsors on top, but a Bima alone is paying him ten million yen plus pay per view sales. Gotcha. All right. So I just want to make sure. So 10 million yen converts into 750,000 US dollars. Okay. Correct. Yes. Sir. All right. Yeah. Because I, I, I thought, because I was thinking about him, I'm like, I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait, I know we just said US dollars, but I'm like, I'm, I'm like, that's not what he's getting yeah. paid in. Because I yeah. remember reading it and I, and I remember, I, and I, me- I remember, I think I had to like calculate, you know, the difference, stuff like that. And that's why I'm like, okay, all right. Because that's why I want to make sure I'm like, eh, well, he's not really getting that. <laughs> well, I just want to, I just want to make sure, but no, sorry. So, so we're good with our, with our math and everything. All right. It's yeah, it's a big one. It's a big amount of money, no matter how you slice it. That's a big yeah. amount. Of, that's that's almost as much as we get paid for this show, right? <laughs> yeah, only one <laughs> wish, only one can hope. But yeah, no, but like I said, though, but I mean, I'm saying that he's only 31. You know, like yep. I said, you know, there's there's a first fight for him right here. Like to me, again, it's like say, like we talk, like you know, you were just saying, like kind of like uh, Floyd Mayweather, just going around and, and, and trying trying to really, you're just trying to really, just trying to do big fights. You know, like I say he might do this one with Belly Sugden. Then maybe, then maybe, then maybe he could do, he could do a one fight off with with uh, with uh, somebody in one, you know, or, or anything like that. So I, I think, I think that's, I think, I think that's what he's trying to do. And I agree with you. And so I think that's kind of the model is like he's showing it of like organizations. Look, I will co-promote with you, and I'm getting paid by a Bima. 
like put your guys on the table and I'll fight them. I'll show up in glory. I'll show up in one. You guys are paying me very small compared to what I'm making in a BEMA. So I'm happy to do a one-off fight and leave. Um, so yeah, co-promoting with a glory, co-promoting with one championship or whatever, just touring around the globe doing stuff or the, the one in China, he was talking to as well for a little while there. And I forget the name right now. Uh, but yeah, he was talking to them quite seriously. I know he was talking to one championship in very serious talks, but I think he's trying to show proof of concept of like, look, you can just, you guys, I'll show up. I'm getting paid by somebody else. And I also think what other companies may not like is that on one side, like we do want to see him fight like a Rod Tang or someone like that, you know, from one championship. It's yep. a fun crossover fight that we'd love to see. But someone like Rod Tang might be looking at this and like, wait, why am I with one? Can I find like the same sort of thing of like, will some TV company pay me X amount of dollars and I can go free agent and I can go co-promote with Takeru? You know what I mean? Like this, it might have large ramifications or, you know, one championship is paying these guys quite a bit uh, and you're under a pretty strict contract, but it might have larger ramifications. Like, why would I stay with glory when i can go do something like this why would i stay with one championship when i can go do something like this essentially the biggest star in the sport went free agent and made more money from it that has to mean something right yeah i mean i i, I kind of want to say it's kind of like how it is with like i said like i know you mentioned like boxing like it's yeah. kind of like how it is stateside here with uh with with, with boxing yep. usually most most boxing promotions are linked up with a TV slash streaming deal like PBC is Showtime. Yep. Top yep. rank is ESPN. Matchroom boxing is uh the zone. So yep. like that's where they're getting their money from is really from these TV companies. So it's kind of like Takura is really doing that where instead of, instead of him being his own, instead of him being like part of a, a promotion, it's him getting paid by a TV company, yep. you know, and he and, and they're just putting fights on, you know. So yeah, uh, I I think I think that, I think that's pretty cool because also too now like yeah. this now this promotion, I think they're I think they're getting access to being shown in Japan because they're going to be on Abima, which is yeah. usually something that you know I'm sure more uh, uh, MTGP isn't usually over in Japan, so that so that could be a new audience, new fan base stuff like that where they where they can then maybe start liking you know liking your promotion and watching you guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. MTGP, like this is a, a jewel in their crown that for years and years and years, they will show sponsors this fight. Uh, it was streamed in Japan and we did these numbers on a Beam TV. Before this, their biggest name who competed with them was Liam Harrison. And, and they still have him like on the website. He's on a lot of the banners. And Takuru, Takuru is the guy. No matter who you're sponsored, whoever you're negotiating with as a sponsorship or TV deal or whatever, this is a big deal. So essentially, MTGP gets a huge elevation just from working with Takuru, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like I say, you know, a big yeah. name like that, big star like that. Like I say, it's just, it's just like, it's just as if, it's just as if they had signed him and and he and he was just gonna uh, uh, could be for them for like for like a few years. Yep, exactly that. So looking forward to seeing what the future holds. Glad to see these people getting paid so much, and it's huge news. I'm looking forward to this fight uh, in Paris. Should we move on to some some fights that happened? Yes, yes. Let's All do right. that. So we'll talk a little bit of the one championship, uh, one fight night eight that just happened. And then we'll get into some of the rise El Dorado fight that happened a week ago. And then uh, nothing major scheduled before our next show. So we're not actually previewing any fights, but then we'll have some fan questions. And we got a, we got a few fun ones today. Uh, the flyweight kickboxing world championship went down and it wasn't quite what anybody was expecting. So Rod Tang struggled to make weight. He says, I want to be a two champion, two sport champion. I got the Muay Thai title and I want a kickboxing title. And he was going to fight Superlek for the kickboxing title. Didn't even make the scales, but apparently uh, had an injury or something like that. But our man, Mini T, Daniel Williams, stepped up. He went yeah. up in weight class again to take on a world champion in the main event. Super Lack, of course, knocked him out uh, in round three with a very nice head kick, followed up with punches, got another knockdown, and that was all she wrote on it. What were your thoughts on the whole like ordeal going in and then the fight itself? Yeah, I mean, shout out to, uh, you know, to, to Daniel Williams, you know, for, for stepping up, you know, spe especially on short notice like that. But, yeah. hey, you know, like I said, you know, he took a chance, uh, you know, uh, he dared to be great as as uh, as we like to say, you know, sometimes. Uh, but, hey, man, it just it just it just didn't work out for him. You know, like I said, in the beginning, you know, he tried to use his movement. Uh, he tried to try to use the cage. But then uh, but then a, then a super like kind of kind of adjusted well, caught on to him. And then next, you know, the damage, it, it just started to add it up. And then, you know, we, we saw we saw what we saw in the uh, third round. Yeah, absolutely. And Daniel Williams, he's he is a 
an essay on being at the right place at the right time because he was a, a short notice fill in to fight Rod Tang in 2021. Now he's a short notice fill in to get this title shot, both of which were in weight classes above him. Uh, but he shows up and he tries to throw down with everybody. He is he will take a fight against anyone and he's built his name by doing that and glad to see him. But yeah, Super Luck is not your everyday Muay Thai fighter. Super Luck is not your typical good striker. Super Luck is above average. This is why we talk about Super Luck versus Rod Tang. We probably take super lack, whether it's under Muay Thai or kickboxing rules. He is not your average run of the mill fighter. And you can see that in this fight. He just figures it out, takes his time. His strikes are clearly wearing on his opponent and he gets the knockout. He's a very skilled fighter, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I say, like, like I, like I said, I want to say that super like to me is the most technical of, of the, uh, I guess you want to say the, the Thai fighters in, in one. And mm. like I said, that's why, that's why I would favor him over a uh, Rotang. I, I agree with you. Yeah, you and I have not changed tone on this one, and I'm willing to be wrong. Uh, I, uh, Superlek versus Takuru. Maybe we're down the line. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, so Alicia Helen Rodriguez came back and fought Janet Todd. Alicia Helen Rod- Rodriguez has not fought, I think, since 2019 or 2020. She had a child. COVID was locking everybody down, that sort of stuff. Hadn't defended her title since defeating Stamp Fairtex. JT Janet Todd is the uh, interim Muay Thai champion and kickboxing world champion. Tried to take the kickboxing title, but over five rounds, Brazil's Alicia Helen Rodriguez just showed more grit. She dug deeper, showed more heart, and she came out on top. What'd you make of the fight? What'd you think of it? Yeah, uh, like this one, I was I was shocked by. Like I said, you know, we we both picked uh, Janet Todd because again, like we said, you know, Janet Todd's been been more active. She's been busy, you know, and like I said, you know, she has been she has been in title fights. You know, it's not like she's just been in regular fights or anything like that. She's been in title fights. You know, be, she's been defending belts, uh, collecting belts, and everything like that. Um, yep. But but hey, man, shout out to um, uh, uh, Rodriguez. Like I said, you know, the first two rounds, you know, she kind of started out slow. So I so so I would probably give those first two rounds to to a uh, to Janet Todd, but then but then come the third round, man, Rodriguez turns it around and this and it and it was all her, man. Like say once once the third round hit, she she just went forward. She 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 didn't she didn't she didn't backpedal or anything like that. And 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 uh and JT man, it just it, it just didn't go her way after that. Absolutely, it was a good fight, and uh, yeah, happy to see Alicia Allen Rodriguez. Good for her. It was someone one championship was clearly on the JT train and was pushing her a lot more. She had more articles published, she had more video packages published. Alicia Allen Rodriguez, that's you fight for it, you got it. Um, and then we also had the fighting rooster Zhang Paiman beat up some guy just as he was supposed to. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> do you have any thoughts on that one? <laughs> I mean, yo, let's just let, let's just let's just run it back, man. Him and Jonathan DeBella, man, he, he's he's called. He's calling out. He's calling out John. He's calling out Jonathan. He's calling out Jonathan DeBella. DeBella. Yeah. Uh, DeBella responded back on Instagram saying 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 that he's ready. So yep. let's do it. Probably what May fifth, Cinco de Mayo. Why not Colorado? Let's go. I would love to see it. Jonathan DeBella fighting in Colorado May 5th. That would be awesome. He's even called out uh, him and Daniel Williams verbally agreed to a fight as well. And that's that's the right weight class. Both of these guys just want to fight. Uh, Zhang Paiman keeps calling for it. But yeah, Jonathan DeBella has been active or he has been loud. It is time for him to fight. We want to see him defend this title against any any and all comers. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to it. Hey. And now we can take a victory lap. Eddie, Silk, E, Smooth, Abasolo winning via knockout. Man, how'd you feel? What'd you make of this one? Uh, dude, like that might have been the best I've seen Eddie uh, Abasolo look, man. He looked real good. I mean, movement was on point. Combinations were definitely on point. I mean, I said I, I kind of said this to you off air, but man, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Nick Larson, man, four, four ounce gloves might not be for you, my guy. You might need the 10 ounce. Go back to kickboxing. I just don't know, man. It's just it, it it hasn't been a good run for him so far in one. But hey, man, you know, maybe he takes some time off. He could bounce back. Oh, totally, totally. He's a very highly skilled fighter, of course. He's got a long history. Uh, but yes, Silky, so it is Eddie Abasolo's day. Uh, the guy's kind of putting it all together. He said he said he felt a little bit uncomfortable in his first Muay Thai fight in one championship. Now he's gonna put it together. This is the second Muay Thai fight in one championship. Kind of Looking good, looking like he should. This is why they call him Silky Smooth. He just, yeah. when he puts it all together, he's clearly a very good fighter. I don't know if he's next for Tall and Chai. I don't know, but I don't know how to you match up Tall and Chai with, right? Right in this division. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like he only he only has he only has one win so far. So I mean, you probably you probably want to at least maybe get another one, you know, yeah. in you know un, under your belt. But I mean, hey man, it's to me. I feel like some divisions are kind of slim, so. You never know, man. One win could 
could get you into a big fight. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And Tawan Shai is out here. I mean, he's knocking out everyone. He's a scary prospect, but we'll see how that goes in the future. And of course, we never doubted it for a second. Iman Barlow gets a unanimous decision win over the Belarusian Barbie. You always knew. You never doubted it. Exactly. Dude. Iman Barlow, I mean, they should just give her a belt already. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's what it is. Dude, that, that, that right there is your future champ. Uh, I'm saying, man, she, she, she just, she just real good, man. Real, real talented, uh, man. Like her kicks are just devastating. So, I mean, just like you said, man, Iman Barlow all day, every day. Let's check. Uh, women's Muay Thai. Oh, that's Smila Sundell and Jackie Buntan territory. And I think, uh, uh, one of the Jeroen Sack sisters is also in that division. But yeah, it's a fun division. Women's strawweight. Like it has some very good fighters. Women's strawweight Muay Thai has some good fighters in it. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how she does against the uh, the others in the division. But yeah, looking forward to the future. She was she was a champion in every division she's fought in, except for yeah. one championship so far. Yeah, like I said, she was she was like the longest reigning infusion champion that I know of. Then I think she maybe was in uh i think she did fight for uh um uh, mtgp as well because she is yeah. from england you know yeah. uh so i, I want i want to say she was a champion there i think i think she has a couple of um uh uh iska belts as well so yeah absolutely and of course lion fights which was the lion fight i mean we we covered lion fights when we started didn't we and now yeah. they, they we outlasted them <laughs> yeah uh, let's move on to Rise El Dorado, kind of their annual show. They put up their big stars for, I mean, we having broke it down ahead of time, they were, it seemed like that Rise set up their big stars to have showcase fights. And then when the fights went to air, yeah, that's kind of just, just what happened. Starting at the top, Shiro, just a very aggressive, exciting fighter, got a head kick knockout against Deselect. Deselect's a very young man in Muay Thai. I think he's only about 23 years old, still very much developing skills, extremely strong kicks, has a bit to, of a uh, leaves you wanting with the hands and especially defense. But yeah, Shiro got a head kick knockout uh, in the in the later rounds there. Very exciting fight. Uh, we also had Kento Haraguchi after I mean, he just keeps fighting internationals. <laughs> now he, he got a round four knockout via punches. Uh, he was the one who fought Petch uh, last year. Uh, got a knockout just as he was supposed to. Uh, what else did you see on this one? We were talking about uh, Kayuki Miyazaki but ahead of time. Yeah, we were. Like I said, she went out there, did her thing. I mean, took care of business. And yeah. again, like we we talked about, you know, um, Rise and K1 working together. You know, she after her win, who did she call out? She called out the K1 uh, champion, um, Amiyu. You know, she yeah. wants she wants that she wants that champion versus champion fight. You know, like I said, you know, it could be something uh, that that what that what the men did last year. The ladies are trying to do where you try to get maybe like you no know, two women champions. You know. Uh, uh, going after it, so I mean, I def, I def, I definitely would be down for that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, that was that was a good one. Uh, and yep. of course, like you said, you uh, you talked about uh, Shiro. Uh, of course, we yep. can't forget that he actually is now the um, uh, inaugural um, a world world a world bantamweight champion for Rise. So yes, uh, I forgot about that. That it was the inaugural yeah. title. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So hey, man, new champion out here, man. Hey, he, I mean, Rise is Rise, Rise is looking for stars since you know. Um, uh, tension is gone now, you know, for, for rise because he was their big star. So, I mean, so, so, I mean, you know, you're trying to find somebody new now. And I mean, this, this could be the guy, I mean, fast hands, light speed, you know, and he looked, he looked real good. And oh, plus yeah. Two, and, yeah. And, and, and plus two main event as well. You know, uh, you know, he, he definitely, he, he definitely didn't look frozen. Oh man, he he performed in it when he was given the main event slot, he absolutely performed and came through Shiro and they made a title for him. Uh, yeah, I think, like you said, they're trying to make him into the next face of the company. Uh, but yeah, hopefully they do. Hopefully it works. This is an ex incredibly, incredibly talented fighter, uh, all around very well-rounded. And uh, yeah, it's great to see him get a such a highlight reel win here. It was a ton of fun. But yeah, it was a good card up and down. Uh, a few other notes. Kazuki Osaki got a win via right hook, just as he was supposed to. Uh, in a very competitive fight, Toki Tamaru was able to defeat Kasane. Uh, this was maybe on paper the most competitive fight on the card of the real big fights. Kenta Nanbara got the win as he was supposed to over Rio, who just seems unable to win and should retire at this point. Um, we also had kicking off the card Montana Ertz. And we were talking off air like this. It really grabs our attention, doesn't it? Seeing Peter Art's daughter make make a name for herself in kickboxing do you think there's a future here yeah man Dude, to me it's when you when you when you got a legend in the game and then you got their their 
man, what's the way I want their, their, their offspring following yeah. in their footsteps. You kind of want to see how they're going to do, you know, we we're doing, we're doing it in one with, uh, with, uh, Amber kitchen, you know, Julie kitchen oh, yeah. Porter. Yeah, yeah. You know, we want to see how she does. Uh, even, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, John way, uh, uh, John way par par's daughter, you know, I think Jazzy. She, she, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, she's all, she's also in one. So, I mean, yeah. so to me, to, to me, to see these, you know, see these fighters and their kids, you know, coming up, you know, you want you you want to you want to see how, how they do as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll see how she does. I think this is either her professional debut or her pro debut in Japan. We couldn't quite uh, parse yeah. it together because kickboxing records are so weird sometimes. But anyway, so this was a big fight for her. One cleanly look good doing it. And we'll see what the future holds for her. I believe the arts family is now living in Tokyo as well. I know Peter was talking about moving out there. Uh, so, yeah. Lots more going on there. Anything else on the uh, Rise El Dorado card that you saw that you liked? No, man. Just like I said, just just good fights. You know, uh, like I said, uh, just like you talked about with the uh, with the flyweight champion uh, 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 tomorrow, man. Just it was a, a a stellar performance over there. You know, yep. against against a good contender. Uh, you know, same man. Just somebody else. You know, that could be a future star for them as well. Oh, absolutely. You know what the best part about Rise is? We're making these. We're talking about these fights. You can just watch it on YouTube, folks. Like, it's so easy. You can just go to Rise's YouTube, Rise WS, and it'll come up, and they have their fights there. And you know who else does now? Because they heard us complaining about it nonstop. Infusion has now put their fights it was on one, YouTube. It was, I don't know, man. It was one fight that they put up. I don't know. Yet. <laughs> it was one fight, but you know, they just gave us something. So, okay, but but there was other news in Infusion's kind of like, they're, they're, they're more accessible now. Is that right? You, I know you sent it to me. No, well, I mean, they're basically accessible everywhere, but but like but like North America. That was it. Oh, like, perfect. Like, like, like what I said <laughs> to you. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll see what Infusion does. But yes, sometimes Infusion puts their fight somewhere. Uh, but uh, speaking of, so we do have fan questions and it kind of leads into that. So that's perfect. Uh, so we always take fans from the audience and appreciate your fan, your questions, folks, uh, from one of our loyal listeners. Talk about the Glory K1. It's Showtime Fight Pass library deal. So recently it has come to light that all of the former K1 tournaments and Glory kickboxing fights and its Showtime fights are no longer on UFC Fight Pass where they previously were. The person who held the license for all these fights is still Glory Kickboxing. So when K1 bought its licensing back, they did not buy their library back. That's still separately owned and has nothing to do with this kind of deal. So Glory owns all the old K1, not K1 Max, just the old K1 fights. They own the It's Showtime library, uh, and it was all on USC Fight Pass. Now it seems like they're pulling it off, and I believe that they're doing their own style of ufc fight pass and this is also something that you had sent me as well where they're kind of they have a, a, an app on digital tv and i think they're going to expand from there but can you exp tell me a little bit more about this one well no yeah like i said they they i mean they they have their own their own app i think it's called like glory you know glory fights yeah. um app stuff like that so i mean that's that's usually where me where where, where i'm able to watch their their cards now you know but yeah. uh besides the prelims because the prelims they still do have on youtube as well um, yeah. so, so, so there, so there's that, but then also too, though, I think they, they got with another company as well for, um, for, for, for digital as well. But yeah. I, I, I think that was more of a overseas type type of thing. I don't, I don't know if that really affects uh, what's happening here, here in North America. Yeah, we, we, this is a lot of these things are just like one step in and then we'll see where they go from here. But, uh, essentially yeah. glory. It was. I'm sorry. The company that they got with it's called, yes, world. world. Yeah, yeah, world, world, world TV. But it's to help them distribute on it, like because they're distributing fast channel to new stream. I, I guess it's a streaming service for them. But I just yeah. don't know exactly like what they're going to be doing. Like to me, to me, is it where they're having this streaming service, like kind of how they have their Glory Fight app in the U.S., but this is just for overseas. Yeah, it's not entirely clear what that'll look like, uh, but or like who gets the rights to what because they use. Yeah, I'm not really sure either. However, it does seem like they are setting up their own kind of library, their own digital TV app or online, uh, you know, mobile app or whatever. But especially for digital TVs where uh, they didn't have their library before, and it seems like they're going to try to put it all together, probably with the K1 and its Showtime. So maybe I'm merging a couple of stories there, but that's what I'm seeing of at the same time that you have kickboxing fights like glory and K one removed from fight pass. Glory is also saying that we're announcing a new app for digital TV. 
those that's not a coincidence that so those came up at the exact same time so glory owns the rights for those and i'm imagining that they're going to put them on all on their own digital tv platform so they won't be on ufc fight pass anymore so as far as i'm concerned there's no point having ufc fight pass yeah. <laughs> no way <laughs> if it doesn't have old k1 fights there's no point in that um we also had um the upcoming heavyweight tournament in glory. Yeah, we did cover that one a little bit. But yeah, Jafar Wilness uh, versus Tariq Os- Cookie Osaro versus... A- a- and on the other side of the brackets will be Luis Tavares versus Inver Sleeve... Sleeve... Sorry. We're, so, we're from the... Dude, we're- <laughs> I was going to say, did you, did, you, did you see who uh, Cookie is training with? No, I didn't. Bring me up to date here. Our guy, Ernesto Hoost. He's getting oh, he's tra- drop on him. Yeah. Come yeah, on. man. Yeah, oh, man. He's getting man. he's getting knowledge. He's getting knowledge dropped on him uh, from uh, from our favorite. Uh, yeah. So I mean, hey, man. I mean, dude, you you can only you can only get better hanging out with Ernesto. Who's I mean, yeah. I do like me some Jafar Wilness, but hey, man. I mean, if Cookies hanging out with Ernesto, who's I might have to maybe lean towards Cookie now. But you know, we you know we still got time. We still got time. But uh, but yeah. But also, also too though, yeah. I mean, speaking of the tournament, like I said, a lot of people were asking us about 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 like the mainstays or everything like that. Like I know, I think Badahari had just did a, I think he did a live, you know, on his on his Instagram feed or something like that, or or interview where I think uh, somebody had asked him about about him being in the tournament, and he right. didn't say no, he didn't say yes, he just gave a maybe. So, I mean, you know, I, we 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 could see Badahari because I'm sure I'm pretty much sure probably people do want Badahari. We're on there saying, you know, this this what yeah. we talk about, you know, eight man tournaments, you know, you know, you know, you know, just like the K one day. So I'm sure his name will come up. Like I say, you know, we've only got shows up until June. We don't know what we don't know what they have planned for July, August, or September yet. So I'm pretty yeah. much sure more, you know, more more heavyweight tournaments are going to be coming. Like I say, you know, we talk about Levi Richters, you know, yep. uh, you know, um. Uh, uh, Benjamin Attic booby and everything like that. So, man, yeah, like you said, Tariq Ozar, like he's a guy I liked anyway, and he had a close fight with Levy Richters as his only loss. Otherwise, he's he's winning in glory. If he can pick up a few of the technical skills and just a couple of really like fundamental things from Ernesto Hoos, it'll make him such a great fighter in that tournament. And I would pick him over Javar Wilness. I bought a Hari in the year end tournament. I, you know, glory wants it. I, if Bader wants it, that's completely up to her, uh, completely up to him. Uh, he he gets paid good money to show up. I just there, I don't think there's anyone that I'd pick him against right now. It is the is the real problem. Like he's just his better days are so far behind him at this point, and it's so hard. Like he is the biggest name in glory aside from Rico, but yeah, I just I don't know who you would pair him against if he for him to actually beat. You know what I mean? I mean, if he would have got the guy that. Um... Tavares is fighting. I maybe would have picked uh, Badahari then, <laughs> you know, because nobody knows who this guy is. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why everybody's like, "Oh, this is uh, Tavares' tournament to win." So that way, it, yeah, it, it very much is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory wants Tavares to win. He speaks well, looks nice, fights well, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, it's gonna be a fun year for Glory. Um, we have another fan question: Who's cuter? And you can't go wrong. I mean, you got the beard, man. You got the facial hair. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. You're Brandon. Come on. You can't go wrong with either of us. <laughs> uh, uh, what else do you do? What What else do you do enjoy in life besides watching and talking about combat sports? I don't know. Brandon? Do you do uh, me, I mean, me, dude. I mean, I'm I'm a low-key guy, man, dude. You can find me. You can find me playing playing on my PlayStation. I like video games. You know, mm-hmm. uh, can always can always uh, enjoy enjoy time with the family as well. So can't. So I can't go wrong with with those two things right there oh you're just such a typical male demographic fighting sports wrestling video games come on brandon (laughs) (laughs) what are you playing right now on playstation uh right now i'm playing actually a a fifa uh 23 right now oh yeah 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 when i was talking to circuit about that you were like hey (laughs) who's your main team in it fifa's what's up man fifa's what's up (laughs) who's your main team in it uh man you oh okay sure all day man i'm premier league all day yeah yeah very cool uh yeah for myself uh a big yeah video games i play a lot of elden ring still it's just fun uh uh listen to a lot of music like very much into hip-hop and r&b and stuff like that uh you know work out sometimes i go for jogs other than that like i'm a very 
everything just is like you you couldn't get more demographically typical males for our age of just like video games sports yeah. work out sometimes like it is lame stuff oh i like to travel a lot i've traveled a lot in my life I'm always going somewhere I'm going to denmark in a few days so yeah nice. always always something going on you know yeah uh, but other than that i also struggle to talk about myself yeah. <laughs> that's why we do this so we don't have as men we don't actually want to talk about real things so we found a way to talk about sports and never actually talk about things right yep exactly man just talk about kickboxing <laughs> all right mr Catino, what else do we got going on this week what else do we have left to talk about uh i mean nothing i haven't I haven't officially announced it yet but hey guys i mean i did i did put out last week but hey guys out fight news could be coming soon um so this uh so 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 just so just be on the lookout but uh but yeah hopefully uh you know we won't have anything to happen for this one this one like i said uh it should it should be a good one Ooh, we are excited for it we'll keep our eyes peeled when the announcement comes out of course we'll have the breaking news and all that good stuff best of luck to you mr catino and of course folks check out the fighters for shop you got brandon signature wear you got the kickboxing wear you got cat kick sports wear right mr catino Exactly, man. Fighters first that shop. That's where you can get all, all, um, all, all our collections. You can even get the show. The the, the show has a T-shirt. The show even has a hoodie as well. Uh, you know, same for us here for here in, in the in the states, in New Jersey, man. It's springtime, so so hey, you know, you, you have a nice a nice uh, shirt right like this. You, you you can show off the guns as well. That's right, absolutely. Hey, Brendan, appreciate your time talking kickboxing for a few minutes with me this week. Best of luck to you this week, and we'll see you in about two. All right, man. Have a good one. Cheers, Matt.